Hello YouTube. The Goths were a Germanic people who played a major role in the fall of the Western Roman Empire and the emergence of medieval Europe. In 1982, popular Soviet magazine Vakruk Sveta published an article about the history of the so-called Golden Suitcase. The story is very interesting, but there are still many questions that remained after the publication in Crimea, a peninsula in the Black Sea, at the time of the USSR, in 1926, a peasant from the village of Marfovka stumbled upon a burial site of a supposedly Goth tribe near the city of Kerch. The burial turned out to be untouched and also very rich in its contents. The treasure was transferred to the Archaeological Museum of Kerch. It's a very interesting museum, by the way, and um, in my videos, I will keep referring to it. And not only, of course, about this subject. The discovery was sensational because no Gothic monuments of the 3rd or 5th century AD have been found before. In 1941, when Nazi Germany invaded Soviet Union, all this gold jewelry had to be evacuated. A plywood suitcase was made, which later became known as the Golden Suitcase. It weighed about 80 kilograms. Eight zero. The number... The director of the museum, Yuli Yulievich Marti, and several other people made an inventory and filled up the suitcase. They decided to transfer the suitcase to Krasnodar, and from there, after the occupation, they were to be sent to Armavir. The Germans were very well aware of this suitcase. We don't know how, but they were. They even had an inventory of the contents. Himmler himself formed a detachment that included archaeologists in search of the golden suitcase. How did Himmler know about the jewels of the Kerch Museum? Even before the war, uh, a German named Karl Kirsten visited the museum under the guise of a journalist, and subsequently he participated in a number of secret operations to export valuables from various European countries to Germany. The Germans believed that the jewels found in a burial near the village of Marfovka belonged to the legendary Queen Fedia, the leader of the East Goths. So the infamous and lurid Anerbe, what was it looking for in Crimea? We will look at it closer using Russian sources. In Crimea, the efforts of the Nazis were aimed at research for artifacts of the Gothic state of the Germans, which arose during the Great Migration of People and existed for nine centuries. Later, the Goths entered the principality of Feodoro and the Goths themselves assimilated. The Nazis were more in, most interested in the artifacts of the Gothic kings. The legends about them disturbed the imagination of German occultists and the Nazi leadership demanded at all costs to obtain sacred objects. And then the Nazis turned their attention to the Kerch Historical and Archaeological Museum, which had antique statues, bas reliefs, and objects uh, from the grave of a German woman, which were found in 1920s near the village of Marfovka. The fact that the woman was a goth was indicated by the go two golden pins with which her cloak was pinned together, the main sign of German clothing. So the Nazis declared the grave to be the burial of the legendary warrior Queen Fedia. The main artifact that the Annenerbe occultists began, began, began hunting for was uh, Fedia's um, tiara, a crown of pure gold decorated with large pomegranate seeds. In addition to it, gold coins, fibulas or pins, earrings and pendants, gold beads, gold masks, re rings and bracelets were found in that grave. Before the war, 
The Nazis tried to buy their treasure, but the Soviet archaeologists refused to sell the artifacts. That's the story. But what I can tell you is that if the leaders of the Soviet socialist regime wanted to sell the treasures to their national socialist allies in Germany, same scum. At the, at the time, they would ignore archaeologists. So then it was decided in Berlin to take over the crown during the war, World War II. In 1941, the gold from Kerch was transported to the Krasnodar Museum of Local Lore, and the boat with artifacts was literally accompanied by the German uh, Messerschmitt airplane, which was constantly flying low, but it didn't shoot at the boat. Obviously, the pilot was afraid of damaging the jewelry. Therefore, the shipment of the golden suitcase was carefully monitored. Russian researchers state that the Nazis were literally following in the footsteps of the shipment, so to say. And a suitcase with unique um, archaeological finds from Krasnodar I should say the suitcase, was transported and deposited with Anna Avdeykina, an employee of the city executive committee. The suitcase was opened, all the items were rechecked, a new official document was produced, and the suitcase was sealed again. And a telegram was sent to Moscow that all the exhibits were intact. According to the memoirs of Avdeykina herself, she became very ill with typhus and lay at home for three months when she was weakened after the illness and, and everything. Actually, when she was able to move, it turned out that almost everyone had already evacuated from Armavir. Armavir is a city in Krasnodar Krayo region, Russia, located on the left bank of the Kuban River. So they forgot about the suitcase, and it was still in her office. She was lucky. She was able to find a vehicle and, and uh, take it to the village of Spokoinaya, where she deposited it in a branch of the Soviet state bank. After it became clear that the Germans were about to surround the village, the suitcase was loaded onto a village cart by the director of the state bank. Um, Yakov Markovich Slobodá tried to evacuate the valuables to the Nazi-free territory, but could not. The village was already surrounded. The Germans did not pay attention to the old cart, did not search the cart, just turned it back. But Slobodá did not return to the village, but he turned into the forest and handed over the bank property, according to one account, to the commander of the partisan meaning guerrilla fighters, detachment of that village. But according to another account, it was turned over to Irina Andreevna Gulnitskaya. We'll speak about her later. Those partisan detachments were formed in advance by NKVD, Soviet secret police. A food base and shelters were prepared for them. Most, but not all. Some were formed uh, when people found out that the Nazi Germany was no liberator. It was the detachment of the uh, village of Spokoina that was especially hounded by the Germans. They knew something. Here, in this detachment, the thread of history is lost. The author of the article in Vakruk Sveta, um, and generally who knew about this matter, Yevgraf Konchin, wrote that by that time, in 1982, all the witnesses had already died. But somehow another researcher, whose name I could not locate, doubted. And it couldn't be that the Czechists, the Soviet secret police operatives, as they're called in uh, the former Soviet Union, the Czechists were not looking for a suitcase or a death suitcase uh, on so-called fresh tracks right after the war. Indeed, the NKVD began searching for the suitcase immediately after the liberation of Armavir 
from Nazi Germany. In 1944, the Czechists arrived in the village of Spokojna to keep, pick up the suitcase, but it was not there. So an invest investigation ensued. They interrogated all the combatants of the partisan detachment who, who still remained alive. The testimony was confusing. Besides, many, or rather those, except for the squad commanders, no one knew what was in the suitcase. Only the commanders knew. The suitcase disappeared, but was accidentally found empty on the shore by the partisan combatant Magdichov. They were, there were several items lying around the suitcase, and the partisan picked up one of them, a snake jewelry piece. Subsequently, it turned out that many people went down to the stream, so to say, and claimed that the suitcase was empty, but something was lying around, some items, and those items were picked up. The finds were small, so over time, they all disappeared somewhere. Someone had coins, one partisan had a cross. No one gave them those finds. No one considered them to be of any importance. For some reason, the uh, unit uh, or detachment leader did not search those soldiers who found the objects. Over time, several accounts were born of where the golden suitcase could have gone. One. It was snatched by the Germans after all. One of the partisan uh, fighters told how a special SS detachment constantly chased them and then suddenly disappeared. Maybe the Germans threw the suitcase away in a hurry and took away the main valuables with them. After all, more than 700 items altogether were there. But so far, the items of the Kerch Museum have not surfaced at any auction. Therefore, there is a possibility that the Germans still did not get this suitcase. Two, the partisans themselves stole the valuables. Ordinary people, peasants, might not even suspect the value of the items, and they describe the items as bronze trinkets with glass, but the commander of the detachment was literate. And knew perfectly well about the value of the suitcase. Gulnitskaya, the treasurer of the partisan detachment, was also interrogated. She left the detachment on her own, even before the end of warfare and of hostilities. She had 30,000 rubles and a small box with her. They did not find any money or the box, but they found two gold coins that could have belonged to the Kerch collection. Gulnitskaya claimed that she found them in the forest. She didn't know the secret of the suitcase, but she was the one who suggested that the commanders of the detachments might have had a hand in it. One of the commanders could have, hid could have hidden the treasure and deliberately left the suitcase open in a prominent place for everyone to see. The commander of the detachment, Malkov, testified that the suitcase and the money, 40,000, were burned due to the impossibility of evacuation. Yeah, a forest fire could still burn paper money, but not 80 kilograms of gold. Malkov and his deputy got caught trying to exchange money at the bank, and the bills were wet. But as it turned out, these are the very bills that Labada, the <clears throat> director of the state bank I mentioned before, those were the money that were deposited with the guerrilla detachment. Maybe the gold <coughs> was also distributed in bags and buried in basements until better times. But whoever buried them died and they took the secret wisdom. This is quite common when it comes to treasure and people who hide it. There's a hypothesis that when the boxes with shells um, were buried gold, products were also buried with them, with the <clears throat> with military um, equipment, so to say, and uh, uh, shells. So maybe they're still stored underground somewhere in that area. Four, the other hypothesis is that the NKVD, the secret police, still found the golden suitcase. Gunitska was declared a traitor to the motherland. 
but served only three months in prison and was released, which was completely strange for that time because they, Soviets, they gave longer sentence for minor offenses, but she only served three months. Malkov, despite the fact that he got caught exchanging money, was not particularly harmed, so to say. He was only removed from his position. Apparently, they could have colluded with the investigation and the jewels could have been secretly taken by the Czechist secret police operatives to Moscow and handed over to the Gohran. The Gohran was created uh, by the uh, Soviet uh, government, by the, the, by the decree in 1920. In the post-revolutionary years, Gohran collected the jewelry of the Romanovs the Kremlin Armory, the Russian Orthodox Church, as well as valuables confiscated from private collections. In 1946, a gold, golden buckle was found in the local forest. Whether it was from the Kerch gold collection is unknown. So the mystery of the disappearance of Gothic gold has not yet been solved, although it has been, so to say, fought over um, for more than seven decades. But it is known that the Ananerba division, which was engaged in the search of the Gothic tiara under the command of Carl Kirsten, was based in the village of Spokoinia. The SS men finished their work and left for Germany at the end of November 1942. Most likely they found Fedia's tiara and took it with them. That's according to some Russian researchers. In total, there were 719 items weighing 80 kilograms in the suitcase with the gold. Who were those Germans? In the Third Reich of Nazi Germany, there was this secret mystical organization, Anna Nerva. This mystical organization searched for artifacts all over the continent of Eurasia and beyond. You should see my video about their work in Brazil. They did not shy away from looting museums in Europe, and they sent expeditions to places where not everyone could even get to. The Germans were looking for artifacts of ancient civilizations, also to gain secret knowledge. Of course, the Ananerba expedition reached the USSR. The Germans took a number of directions in their research. Ryazan, Crimea, and the Caucasus, Karelia, and the Kola Peninsula. The Nazis quietly arrived in the USSR thanks to the peace treaty that Hitler and Stalin concluded. Under the guise of scientists, Nazi military uh, specialists collected information about treasures, studied libraries in which ancient manuscripts were stored. They traveled around the villages, introduced themselves as philologists, and searched for any evidence of interesting art objects. All this was necessary to fuel the theory of the superiority of the German race over the non-humans or subhumans. These Germans were not taken seriously by the NKVD. The main thing for the Soviet uh, secret police uh, was to make sure that the Nazis did not conduct reconnaissance operations on the territory of the military plants and factories. And the Nazis took advantage of this situation and prepared archaeological finds, artifacts on re religious and ancient themes for experts from the USSR. It was mandatory to preserve everything that was made by German craftsmen, and if it was made by Jews, it was to be destroyed. As the Russian researcher stated at the end of 1942, the Ananerba was shot down. Instead, the Institute of Military Research came about which horrified the world with experiments on people. Its head, Wolfram Sievers, was hanged for his crimes. Neither artifacts nor ideas gleaned from the Russian ancient books and chronicles and oriental manuscripts saved him. So far, only 15% of the exported or stolen artifacts have returned to Russia. I do not know about other countries, and this is the number that... Uh, is given by Russian researchers, so I, I cannot vouch for it. The photo 
you will see in this video is just a sample of gold uh, products or items made during the so-called migration of peoples. Uh, the Goths, they plunder other nations. Um, and um, I highly doubt that they made the pieces themselves. Uh, this was not their expertise. Nevertheless, they took a lot. As for Yegraf Vasilievich Konchin, who passed away in 2011 in Moscow. He was a Soviet and Russian journalist, art critic, writer, honored worker of culture of the Russian Soviet Federal Socialist Republic. He wrote interesting books, a lot of them, but I find this two very interesting. Uh, preserved, uh, no, saved treasures about the salvation of artistic values during the Great Patriotic War, a book for high school students, Moscow, 1985. The other one was The Secret of the Golden Suitcase, documentary essays on how the treasures of the Crimean museums were saved during the Great Patriotic War, Simferopol, Tavria, 1989. So maybe he knew more than he stated. I kind of doubt it, and if this gold wound up in the um, state funds, so to say, uh, of the institution that I named before, we, we, we just don't know. It's not being shown. Nobody talks about it. And of course, if Nazis snatched it, then it may be in some private collection or hidden somewhere with other treasures that they plundered in World War II. That's the story I wanted to let you know today. And from time to time, I'll bring you interesting stories about lost treasures uh, in the former Russian Empire, Soviet Union, and uh, post-Soviet countries. I want to thank you for your attention to my work. And if you like my research, please support me through the links you will find in the description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Please tell others about my work. Thank you.